Mary I throughout her reign as Queen of England gained a brutal reputation and the nickname Bloody Mary. This was because of her persecution of Protestants in which many were burned at the stake across England. Through John Fox's Book of Martyrs, we're introduced to many stories of barbarism and execution that occurred during the reign of Mary. Her restoration of Catholicism as England's main religion saw a great deal of Protestants persecuted at the hands of the Queen, and these public burnings must have been terrifying to have witnessed. These events that were played out were to ensure that the population abided by the rules set by the Queen, especially when it came to religion. However brutal Mary I was, she died under rather tragic circumstances herself. So join us today as we look at the tragic death of Mary I, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Illness and disease during the Tudor period in England was not a rare thing. The country throughout many epidemics was gripped by contagious diseases, and these outbreaks often swept across the country. Tuberculosis, influenza and dysentery kept coming to cause suffering to the people of Tudor England, and also there were often outbreaks of smallpox as well. Henry VIII himself suffered from a bout of smallpox that at the time was an incredibly dangerous and fatal disease. Illness and disease during this period was often linked to God, and was seen as a punishment from God, and also a link was drawn between ill health and sinning. Personal hygiene wasn't great also, but with royalty you would often expect that the health of the monarchy was a lot better than those within Tudor society. Mary I's health throughout her life was not great, and she also suffered from many different bouts of illness. Today we have a much better understanding of illnesses and disease, and it gives us a way of being able to understand the past a little bit better, and also to point the finger at what illnesses haunted those of the past. Mary I's life wasn't stress-free to say the least, and during her teenage years, she lived with a great amount of worry. This was probably mostly brought about due to the fact her father decided to annul his marriage to his first wife and Mary's mother, Catherine of Aragon. At this time Mary and Catherine were treated rather poorly by the king, and this must have played on Mary's mind. She's known as a rather stubborn woman who you wouldn't have liked to have crossed, and chances are that these experiences shaped her later queenship. Mary was described as having a loud but deep voice, grey eyes of which she was rather short-sighted, and also having red hair and a fair complexion. In early 1528, Mary endured a bout of smallpox and managed to survive this deadly illness, getting over it. She also suffered pains in her head and stomach, and was known to be unable to keep food and ingest food for periods of up to 10 days at a time. The best physicians in the country would have treated her, and she was diagnosed with strangulation of the womb, which caused problems with menstruation, depression, breathing issues and swelling of her abdomen. These symptoms would later be linked to her death. She would also suffer with headaches, vomiting, fainting and melancholy. Also in her later teenage years, Mary became very ill yet again, complaining of headaches and a bad stomach. She was treated by Lady Shelton, who even prescribed her medication that worsened her illness, possibly causing an allergic reaction. This caused Lady Shelton to believe she could even possibly be accused of poisoning a princess, of which could have led to her execution. Even the royal doctor, Dr. Butts, was sent to see Mary, and he advised that her condition was treatable and that she would recover. Her illness then went away but came back a number of different times, with Mary suffering from depression and illness, mostly in autumn and spring. Mary's well-being was not really a secret, and it was known across Europe of the princess's failing and declining health. At the time it was probable that she would be married off to a European prince, in order to secure alliances for Henry VIII with other European dynasties and empires, however her health made finding a suitor for her difficult. In the winter of 1537, she suffered with illness seriously again, being unable to get out of bed, and the royal doctor was called yet again. She then later suffered from a serious fever, that was so severe that many thought she would die. It took her a long while to get over this, and although we can criticise Henry VIII for many things, he did take some interest in his daughter's health at this time. Henry VIII married his sixth wife, Catherine Parr, on the 12th of July 1543, and Mary was even invited to accompany the royal couple on their honeymoon, but had to turn back due to illness yet again. Fevers plagued the princess, it seemed a lot during this time, and she suffered with depression yet again. 
The reign of her younger brother Edward VI would not help her mental state, as his religious reforms to convert the country to become further Protestant went deeply against Mary's ideas. She was pressured to stop attending Catholic Mass and also to convert to Protestantism, which would have greatly increased her stress. She later wrote to Edward VI Council that, My health is more unstable than that of any creature, and I have all the greater need to rejoice in the testimony of a pure conscience. Now although this video is titled The Tragic Death of Mary I, it's important to establish that even before she became Queen, her health was incredibly fragile, and she suffered greatly with many problems in her life. Once she became Queen, her health problems continued, and much of these are also linked to her quest for an heir. Following Edward VI's death, Mary deposed the nine-day Queen Lady Jane Grey and became Queen herself, but she needed to find someone to marry very quickly. This man would be Prince Philip of Spain, who would later become King Philip II of Spain. When we consider what was important to many of the royals, and especially Henry VIII, it was a quest for an heir, and particularly a son, who would succeed them as King of England. This was no different for Mary I, but it was through pregnancies which she would suffer greatly. Shortly after her marriage, around the age of 37, she declared that she was pregnant. She had stopped menstruating, gained weight and also suffered with sickness in the mornings. This was plausible to those at court that the Queen was pregnant, and even the royal doctors believed this. Parliament prepared that if Mary was to die during childbirth, her husband Philip would become regent and rule England, as childbirth was incredibly dangerous. Preparations in late April 1555 were made to await the royal baby, and false rumours spread across Europe that Mary had given birth to a son. However, gossip then spread that the Queen's pregnancy had been delayed and that she wasn't even pregnant. She continued to show signs of pregnancy until July 1555, and the swelling of her abdomen then receded, and the swelling of her stomach went down. Many considered the whole affair to be rather strange, but Mary, who was desperate for a child, believed that the false pregnancy was punishment from God for her having allowed heretics and religious crimes within her country. Mary then fell into a deep depression around her phantom pregnancy, and began to grieve, and her mood wasn't helped when her husband left for war. Mary's stress was heightened, and she worried about rebellion and assassination due to her religious policies, and she suffered with insomnia, with her appearing much older than she actually was due to the tiredness. Mary in 1557 thought she was pregnant yet again, and that her child would be born around March 1558. No one believed her, and she did display a swollen stomach, but many thought this was a case of dropsy, and rumours of a royal pregnancy soon died out. Mary soon began to accept the fact that her half-sister Elizabeth would become queen after her death. Mary recovered, but England at the time in January 1558 was suffering. They lost territory in France, and also the country was suffering greatly with a famine caused by terrible rain. Also, there was a bad pestilence of influenza sweeping the country at a serious rate, adding to the misery killing thousands. It was during this epidemic that Mary I would die at the age of 42, at St James's Palace. The Queen had become incredibly weak, following further bouts of insomnia and depression, and she also had another fever that left her in a bad state. Mary also suffered from dropsy, and was moved from Hampton Court to St James's to prepare for her death. Her mood became worse, and this final bout of illness would be her last she would suffer. She did have moments where she was rational with her advisors, and looked to recover, but in October 1558, it was clear that the Queen was going to die. Philip II, her husband, learned that Mary was on her deathbed, and he even sent his own doctor to see what he could do to treat her. On the 8th of November 1558, agreements were drawn up that named Elizabeth as her successor, and then over the next week, Mary worsened. Her council awaited her death, but as she got closer to death, her household began to desert her and go and visit Elizabeth, to try and gain early favour with the soon-to-be new Queen. She prayed for her salvation, and for God to look after her. She heard one final Catholic Mass around midnight on the 17th of November 1558, and between 4 and 5 in the morning, passed away peacefully, and the reign of Mary I came to an end. Her body laid in state for three weeks before she was interred at Westminster Abbey. Now in terms of what she suffered from, 
there have been a few proposed ideas. One is that her depression following her supposed pregnancy accelerated her death and that she suffered from ovarian dropsy. This produced severe abdominal pain in cysts that would swell with fluid to a big size and these swellings could have been linked to the idea of Mary being pregnant. Today this could be treated well and history could have been different if medical knowledge and surgery was better at the time. Mary herself labelled her illness her old guest and it was also considered that she could have died from the influenza outbreak sweeping England, but it's clear that her depression and earlier illnesses did not help her. So although today Mary I is known as Bloody Mary, she did suffer to a great degree throughout her life. Although it's inexcusable that she burned Protestants at the stake, causing great suffering in such a public spectacle, the Queen was plagued with much ill health throughout her life. Mary herself was a staunch Catholic, and even until her dying day, her religious ideas and beliefs never wavered. She died a Queen of England, a woman of strong principles, but a woman throughout her life who had suffered greatly. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.